So ChatGPT has been all the rage uh, for the past, let's say, two weeks. And I wanted to give you my input since this channel is uh, sort of like a place where I show my sort of wider range of interests. But I, uh, that would actually um, describe a polymath. But I'm far from being a polymath because when you, when you, when you consider a polymath, you think of uh, historically speaking, you think of Leonardo da Vinci, Benjamin, Fra Benjamin Franklin, and other other geniuses of uh, throughout the ages who've been able to actually blend arts and sciences. So it's uh, it's just uh, it's not that I consider myself a polymath, but I I wish that in the future I could get close to that no, uh, nomenclature. Now. Uh, my experimentation with ChatGPT has been quite extensive, especially when it comes to how it actually helps me in cybersecurity. Now, when it comes to my wider range of subjects, such as, for example, I want to study uh, multiple things at the same time, like, for example, physics, I want to study hard sciences such as physics, chemistry, math, and also um, biotechnology, which is sort of like that's a more modern uh, more modern uh, science but for example how could this help me be efficient in those multitude of tasks now for example let's actually look at uh, some of the experimentations that are done with chat gpt first i wanted to so for example how it could help polymaths for example i um asked it is your name chat gpt because I wanted to ask how can ChatGPT help polymaths become more efficient, which is what I've done here. So uh, then it says that uh, I don't have a name. So many of you know, but probably many more do not actually know how um, or what ChatGPT is. This is actually a language model trained by OpenAI and um, its knowledge, it's been trained on a large corpus of data up to Q4 2021. So it doesn't have knowledge of current events and it doesn't have self-knowledge. Uh, Self-awareness is something that language models um, are aspiring to have, so to speak. But it's th that's, such a, that's still a very sensitive subject because um, we are far from achieving self-awareness or some sort of awareness when it comes to language models. Now, uh, ChatGPT, a lot of you do not know, as, uh, has been fine-tuned from GPT 3.5, which is a better, or it's a, it's a better version versus uh, the other models such as uh, DaVinci, DaVinci 002, I, it's here, DaVinci 002 and 01. So 3.5 um, gives far better output than uh, th uh, 3 from my experiments. Now, as you can see, that uh, the text DaVinci 003 or GPT 3.5 mouthfuls, uh, you can actually play with the parameters on OpenAI's website. So you can actually modify the temperature, making the model less or more deterministic. You can, you can actually... Uh, set the length of the response that you want to generate. You can actually set top P, frequency penalty, presence penalty. These are all parameters that you can tune. But for ChatGPT, these parameters are probably fixed. So that's why sometimes uh, the model tends to hallucinate, so to speak. Now, back to our topic. So there is a difference between ChatGPT and uh, GPT 3.5. Especially when it comes to the fact that sometimes ChatGPT is very conservative in uh, its answers and probably it is not being very helpful at, at all. But hopefully OpenAI is going to take all of our feedback and actually use it to improve the model. Now, what is ChatGPT? It doesn't have awareness of that thing. Now, then I asked, how can large language models be used by polymaths? Give me some implementable ideas. So uh, it gave me some sort of ideas could use a language model to generate creative content such as poetry short stories or even songs then i ask what is a polymath gives me what is a polymath might be someone who is interested in many different subjects 
I personally am not interested in many different subjects. I am interested in a few subjects that I want to sort of like be very good at through time, especially when it comes to hard sciences such as math, uh, physics, chemistry, coding, robotics, all of these, and maybe a combination of all of these together. Maybe I can find drawing lines between all of these, such as I'm trying to find right now between cybersecurity and machine learning, which is what I'm trying to, if some of you know me, I have uh, I have other channels. One of them is in cybersecurity and that's like larger than this one. Now, a polymath might be someone who's interested in many different subjects and is able to learn new information quickly and easily. How can a modern polymath use AI in day-to-day -day life? Now, it gives me a couple of examples, which, to be honest, have not been very helpful, and I ask, give me more. So, they, I could use AI models to assist with image or video analysis. I don't think I want to do that, because I actually edit videos myself, if this is... Uh, this would be for creative purposes, but if this is not for creative purposes, but for analytical purposes, maybe this would be helpful. If I, if I would be having a job in uh, computer vision, for example, to assist with decision making, yes, maybe, but not necessarily at this point. It could help me, for example, put me on a path to um, further investigate a certain decision that I want to make. A polymath could use AI models to assist with social interactions. How is that? They could use an natural language processing model to automatically analyze, analyze and understand the sentiment of messages or conversations or to generate responses that are appropriate and engaging. Yes, that's one way to do it when it comes to social interactions and communications online, I would say. A polymath could use AI models to assist with research and knowledge discovery. That's one very good way to go about it. So let's say, for example, that let's actually write that. Let's say, for example, that I want to build very solid skills in math, not maths. Give me an outline or a study plan for the next year, considering that I'm not a beginner in math, since I've already graduated so this is a very good example. If, if you give very specific, so to speak, your output is as good as your input. If you give the model a more specific input, you'd probably get a better output in most of the cases. Beginner in math, since I've already graduated from an engineering degree. Let's see what it uh, actually gives me. You likely have a solid foundation in math already. However, if you want to build even stronger skills, there are several steps you could take. Here's what possible outline that you could follow over the next year. Identify specific areas of math you want to focus on. This could include advanced topics like calculus, linear algebra, or differential equations. More specialized subjects like blah, blah, blah. Find or develop high quality learning materials for the areas you want to focus on. This could include textbooks, online courses or resources that are designed to help you learn and understand the subject matter. Create a study schedule that allows you to regularly spend time studying and practicing math. Dedicated blocks of time each week where you can focus on learning and mastering the material. As you study regularly, test yourself to ensure that you're retaining and understanding the information. Test yourself using quizzes or other forms of assessments. Now, on that specific um, topic, I would say that I use Can Academy, so it has a network error. <laughs> Can Academy, let's do that one more time. Let's try again. So until, or, until it finishes, let me just uh, keep on with my idea. I'm actually using Khan Academy and also Brilliant. I have a one-year subscription on Brilliant to 
study math, one way in which I study math interactively is using these applications. And I find that being very helpful. Other ways are via courses and via books. So as you can see, uh, this is actually, this is the tablet that I'm recording my videos from. Now this tablet has a stylus pen, which I can use to study and annotate from books. And that's a very interactive way in which I uh, study for my subjects, for the subjects that I want to develop. Uh, yeah. So start by assessing your current knowledge, identify gaps and weaknesses, set smart goals, which are specific, measurable, achievable, and relevant. So in this situation, I'm actually setting a timeline for myself for what I want to learn on a certain subject in a certain period of time. Create a schedule, exactly. Create a schedule for your math studies. Stick to it as closely as possible. Now, when it comes to sticking to it as close as possible, this, um, I'm still not the best at this. Consider setting aside a specific time each day or a week for math study. Now, for example, this would be the time I would dedicate to study cybersecurity. And now I'm actually making this video. So I'm not the best. Begin by reviewing the fundamental concepts and principles such as algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and calculus. Practice, practice, practice. I think this is the bread and butter of everything. Consider using online resources or apps that offer a right, wide range of math problems to work on. As you progress, focus on developing your problem-solving skills. Now, I didn't see this one coming, so this is really good. Math is not just about memorizing formulas or equa equations. It's about being able to apply those concepts to solve real-world problems. Consider seeking out additional resources and support. Okay. Okie dokie. Finally, don't be afraid to challenge yourself and try new things. Let's say, all right, thanks. What if I want, what if I want to become better at machine learning? What, what math should I be focusing on give me a study plan let's also say please if you want to become better there are several key areas of math so linear algebra vector matrix and operations systems of linear equations now for linear algebra there's there's a great book by uh, Mark Peter, I believe, which is Math or Mathematics for Machine Learning. That's really, really good. It's one book that I'm studying from. And it actually, I think it's a 600 plus page book. And it's actually giving you all the math that you need to know for machine learning. So let's see. Again, these concepts are essential for understanding machine learning. So linear algebra, equations, eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Focus on learning calculus, derivatives and integrals. For example, this is very helpful when you're trying to learn about optimizing uh, certain models. Calculus is used in many machine learning exactly to optimize model parameters and to analyze model performance. Also, to give a direction of uh, the model's performance. Once you have a strong foundation in these two, consider studying uh, statistics, probability theory, hypothesis, testing, and regression analysis. This will help you understand working with data in the context of machine learning exactly. So these skills are very useful when it comes to the data that goes into your algorithm. Practice, 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 again, <laughs> Really important, considering using online resources, for example, such as Kaggle, websites or apps that offer a wide range of machine learning to work on. Focus on developing problem-solving skills. Again, it gives us the same sort of like idea like in the previous generation. Consider seeking out additional resources. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. I think the model just copy-pasted from above. But anyways... Uh, this is one way in which you could, as someone with a wider range of interests, could actually become 
very focused on the things that they want to learn or they want to study throughout their lifetime. 